Hey friends, uh, welcome back. I'm Sarah and this is Thrills and Kills Booktube. Today I'm taking you with me as I go shopping at a 12,000 square foot bookstore. And this is also a used bookstore. Most books are either 99 cents or $1.99. So I'm going to bring a $20 bill with me and see what I can find with only spending $20. Hopefully it's not too overwhelming. I read reviews online that say it's actually pretty well organized despite being so large. So hopefully I can like actually find my way around to different genres and find some good horror or thriller books. Um, and I also have to drop off a package. I recently did a unhaul video. So I'll link that up below and down in the description if you're interested. And someone reached out and said, hey, if you're gonna get rid of those books, can I get those from you? So I have to drop off a little package at FedEx on the way out. Um, and oh, I also have to go to the library today. I have a book ready, I think Leech. I think my hold for Leech came in. So it's gonna be a fun filled day of book related errands. And today's spooky shirt, I've got this sweatshirt from a company called Axel Rose. I will link it down below. And it's their, their bite me sweatshirt, super comfy. So let's go buy some books. All right, I have my package to send off these books to Carissa. I'm gonna go run in and do that. And then we're headed to the bookstore. Okay, I am here at the bookstore. This is a 12,000 square foot bookstore and books are either 99 cents or $1.99. I have a $20 bill and that is all I'm allowed to spend. So I'm gonna see what I can find. I have been here once before, maybe six or seven years ago. And at that point I was reading more historical fiction and I really went home with a huge book haul because they had a lot, but it's a used bookstore. So, you know, inventory is gonna fluctuate see what I can find today. Y'all, it is literally a warehouse. Like I said, it is a 12,000 square foot used bookstore warehouse.
in there for an hour. I was starting to get overwhelmed. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but like my brain, it just starts getting sensory overload because there was so much to look at. In the end, I kind of rushed through, but I did get a box of some books. I got three books for um, my nephew. He's a toddler and I got a few books for myself. I'll wait until I get home to tell you what I got and to show you what I got. Um, in the meantime, though, I got to run to the library to pick up a book and then I also got to get groceries while I'm out. Let me get some snacks. Okay, yeah, it was Leech that was on hold at the library, so I just picked that up. And then while I was there, I put a hold on Little Eve for when the library gets their copy, because I want to read it, but I've tried some Katrina Ward before, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about her. So let me get through the library just in case. Yes, it's vanilla custard, hot uh, fudge, hot caramel, and pecans. So it's the end of the day. I'm back home from the 12,000 square foot bookstore that I went to today. I did end up getting four books for myself, three children's books for my nephew. I'm not going to show you those. And I got the one book from the library. So let me start with the library book. I don't know if I'm really going to like this one. It seems a little bit different <clears throat> from what I usually like to read because it seems almost a little more sci-fi. And that is Leech by Hiran Ennis. In an isolated chateau, as far north as north goes, the Baron's doctor has died. The doctor's replacement has a mystery to solve, discovering how the Institute lost track of one of its many bodies. For hundreds of years, the Interprovincial Medical Institute has grown by taking root in young minds and shaping them into doctors, replacing every human practitioner of medicine. That's a scary thought. The Institute is here to help humanity, to cure and to cut, to cradle and protect the species from the apocalyptic horrors their ancestors unleashed. In the frozen north, the Institute's body will discover a competitor for its rung at the top of the evolutionary ladder. A parasite is spreading through the Baron's castle, already a dark pit of secrets, lies, violence, and fear. The two will make war on the battlefield of the body. Whichever wins, humanity will lose again. So there's definitely a sci-fi component to that. Um, we will see. It's on the front, the little blurb, it says, A wonderful new entry to gothic science fiction. Think Wuthering Heights with Worms. We'll see. On the back, Brahm has given a little shout out. <clears throat> he says, Startlingly original yet eerily familiar with Leech, Ennis spins classic gothic horror and fascinating science fiction into a creation that is disturbing, horrifying, and impossible to turn away from. So that's Leech. So I got four books from the used bookstore. Um, let me start with, I got Nick Cutter's The Deep. Of his books, this is probably the only one I'm actually interested in. I, the, the stuff I read about the troop, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to read all that body horror. Um, this one I think is a little bit more up my alley and I think I'll be able to handle it. I don't want, I don't like extreme gore and extreme body horror that freaks me out. So this is, um, <clears throat> this takes place like under the ocean. I don't have any books like that. So that's something pretty different for me. A strange, oh, this is also about like a plague. So we got two books now about plagues and parasites. A strange plague called the Gets is decimating humanity on a global scale. It causes people to forget. Small things at first, like where they left their keys. Then the not so small things, like how to drive or the letters of the alphabet. Their bodies forget how to function involuntarily. There is no cure, but far below the surface of the Pacific Ocean, a universal healer hailed as Ambrosia has been discovered. In order to study this phenomenon, a special research lab has been built eight miles under the sea's surface. When the station goes incommunicado, a brave few descend through the lightless fathoms in hopes of unraveling the mysteries lurking at those crushing depths and perhaps to encounter an evil blacker than anyone could possibly imagine. That will go on the shelves. Okay, then I found just so interesting because, <clears throat> so you can very clearly see this book came from Barnes & Noble. So this is Ruth Ware's The Lying Game. Hardcover, very good condition says it was originally $27. Then, you know, there's the 20, it obviously was 20% off at some point at Barnes and Noble. 
Um, I got this for $1.99. So this will go with my Ruth Ware collection. I think I now own four of her books. Um, I've read more than that. I just don't own them all. So this is The Lion Game. I think this was like in 2017 or 2016. And it says the rules are simple. Number one, tell a lie. Two, stick to your story. Three, and never ever get caught. On a cool June morning, a woman is walking her dog in the idyllic coastal village of Salton along the tidal estuary known as the Reach. Before she can stop him, the dog charges into the water to retrieve what first appears to be a wayward stick. But to her horror, it turns out to be something much more sinister. Oh, I would freak out if my dog found like a bone or something. The next morning, three women in and around London, Fatima, Thea, and Issa, received the text they'd always hoped would never come. From the fourth in their formerly inseparable clique, Kate, that says only, I need you. The four girls were best friends at Salton, a second-rate boarding school set near the cliffs of the English Channel. I like how she calls it out and says it's second-rate. Each different in their own way, the four became inseparable and were notorious for playing the lying game telling lies at every turn to both fellow boarders and faculty. But their little game had consequences, and as the four converge in present-day Sultan, they realized their shared past was not as safely buried as they had once hoped. So, I love Ruth Ware, and when it comes to thrillers, she's my favorite thriller author. So, I'm excited to add that to my Ruth Ware collection. Okay, so now this was interesting. Um, I got two books in a series. However, <clears throat> there's different ways you can read this series. You can read it in the order of publication, or you can read it in the order, like, chronologically of what happens in the events of this series. And that is the Hannibal series by Thomas Harris. So I got the first, if you're thinking about it chronologically, I got the first and the last book. So Hannibal Rising, which chronologically happens first. It's him, Hannibal as a child. And then Hannibal. Um, I'm going to turn my camera around and I'm going to show you somebody also named Hannibal. Can you say hi, buddy? So this is Hannibal. This is my Anatolian Great Pyrenees. My baby. <laughs> so he heard me talking about the Hannibal series and he kept looking at me. He was very confused. I love Silence of the Lambs. In fact, we have dressed up as our family costume in the past as Silence of the Lamb. So Hannibal was obviously Hannibal. We had a foster dog at the time. I dressed him up as a moth. I was Clary Starling. I had like a whole FBI get up and my husband was Buffalo Bill. So we love that whole series. I have just never read nor owned the books. I've seen the movie. So I'm excited to add these two, but now I'm gonna need Silence of the Lambs and Red Dragon to add to my collection. And they're in really good condition. So I was excited about that. So yes, I got these four from the 99 cent bookstore today, uh, 12,000 square feet. It was a little bit overwhelming. They did have it broken out into fiction and nonfiction. And then in the nonfiction section, they had it by category, but in fiction, it was just alphabetical. I mean, they had like children's and then adults, but it was just alphabetical. So I was having to go through half of this dang bookstore with my head like this, trying to read the title. So that was a little bit difficult. I'm sure I missed, I missed a lot of good stuff, probably. What I found interesting, I saw a lot of book of the month books there. So people are very clearly getting these books and then either not liking them or getting books they never wanted and they're <laughs> donating them or giving them away and then they're finding themselves in used bookstores. So I found that really funny. So all right, those are my four books I got today, and then I had a really good rest of the day. I'm gonna go, um, I got this baked brie um, with like the phyllo dough and the cranberries on top. And I've got some corsini crackers and some red wines. So I'm gonna go do all that, have that tonight. And <clears throat> I don't know if I'm gonna watch a movie or if I am going to read. There's a few more books I wanna get done in this last week of October. So I think I'm actually gonna read tonight. That's it. Hope you guys had a good one. Um, let me know, do you have really good used bookstores where you live? I have to drive a pretty decent um, distance to get to some. So let me know if you've got some good used bookstores near you. And in the meantime, stay spooky, my friends.